sorry, apologies. It's the prayer of illumination first. Let us remain standing for the prayer of illumination together. Prepare, Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to hear your word and obey your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, please be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Walter, for leading us in a time of worship. And Wayne and uh, Shui for ministering to us through your talents in playing the piano and the organ as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's great that we can gather today in the house of the Lord, even though it had been raining, but we are gathered here to listen to God's Word. And it's a wonderful thing that we can gather as a family, as Walter said, even though there were showers of blessings, we are glad that we are gathered in the house of the Lord. Today we continue on our sermon series on Nehemiah, and we are looking at Nehemiah chapter 8. I've already said uh, two weeks ago that the shift of focus in Nehemiah had already begun. The Nehemiah had now begun to shift his focus onto the community. The wall has been built, and now the focus is shifting to rebuilding not just the wall now, but the community as well. And so for the next few weeks, you'll be hearing how Nehemiah continues to build the community, community's reformation today, community's uh, commitment, obligations, leadership, community's joy, and ultimately, a community's recommitment of themselves to the Lord. Today, we are looking at a community's reformation. A community's reformation. And today, what we will learn is this, that a community's reformation comes from listening well and living well according to the Word of God. A community's reformation comes from listening well and living well according to the Word of God. And we will be reading just the first three verses of Nehemiah chapter 8. It is only three verses, so let's read Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1 to 3 as a people of God, all together, shall we? So Nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1 to 3, let's read that together. And all the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the years of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. I do want to start the sermon with a question. How many of us did PSLE this year? Sarah, Sarah did PSLE this year as a parent, okay. The children, none, none of you did PSLE this year. We had one who did PSLE this year, two who did PSLE this year. Well done, you have persevered and you have overcome. Woo! <laughs> so two children, one parent. Any grandparents did PSLE this year? You had to boil a lot of uh, ginseng chicken, you know. Uh, make sure that your grandchild had a lot of, uh, 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 what's that? Uh, uh, nice things to eat, you know, so that it will be strong and healthy. Any grandparents did PSLE? Oh, one, one grandparent did PSLE this year. PSLE can be a stressful time, and for my youngest daughter, who did her PSLE three years ago, especially for math, because math can be quite a stressful subject for her. Uh, I don't know whether those of you who did PSLE three years ago, you remember this question, uh, I showed her last night and she said, I can't remember any of this. <laughs> uh, bad memories have been purged out of her, her mind <laughs> because uh, clearly she couldn't do this question three years ago. Math is like that, isn't it? Not only must you listen well in class to be able to get all the techniques uh, of how it, uh, we are supposed to answer the questions, but that is not enough. You have to go on after that to also practice 
If there are three things you need to do to do well in math, can I tell you is this. You need to practice, you need to practice, you need to practice. <laughs> practice, practice, practice to do well in math. And those of us, or those of you who are very good in math will know this. It's about practicing. Not only must we listen well in class to learn the math techniques, uh, how we pay attention in class, but it is only when we begin to live it out in practice that we truly learn the math techniques for ourselves. And so that's a tip for all parents and grandparents who are doing PSLE next year. Practice, practice, practice. Not only listen well in class, but live it out by practicing. And so it is for the lesson that we will learn from Nehemiah chapter 8 today, that the people listen well to the Word of God they really paid attention to it and they learned to live it out well as well. They put in the effort to put into practice the word they had heard and they lived it well. They listened well and they lived it well. Let me first explain how they listened well to the word of God. We read right from the very first verse of chapter 8 that they had gathered as one man, as one people, one nation, one thing, come along, one people. At the water gate, they gathered as one people at the water gate. In Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 26, we had read previously that it was the temple servants who had repaired to a point opposite the water gate. And we know that in generally how Nehemiah had organized the people, he had arranged for the people to repair the various parts of the gates and the walls near to where they stayed. And so it is likely where the temple servants stayed, it was where the water gate was. It was where the temple was where they stayed, and the people now gathered there in front of the temple where the water gate was, very near to where the temple was much like how we gather here today on Sundays to listen to God's Word in the house of the Lord, in church. The people gathered there at the water gate near the temple and we read that they were the ones who told Ezra, they told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, the Word of God. They told Ezra, we want to hear the Word of God, bring out the Word of God so that we can hear the Word of God. They wanted to hear the Word of God. And the reason why they gathered was for the purpose of listening to the Word. They longed for the Word. They were intent on listening to the Word. Not only were they intent on listening to the Word, we read in verse 3 that they listened to it from early morning until midday. So there would be at least three hours of listening to God's Word. And so, if I preach beyond one hour today, you're just hanging there, okay? Two more hours after that to go. Three hours of listening to God's Word, God's Word, at least. Can you imagine that? But you know, they didn't just listen, listen to God's Word for three hours. We read in the second part of the verse the, that the ears of the people were attentive. The ears of the people were attentive, not for half an hour, not for one hour, but for three whole hours. Hours. They didn't complain that the sermon was too long, nor the weather was too hot. They didn't bring out their handphones. They didn't bring out their tablets. They didn't bring out their. Uh, they didn't play five stones. They were attentive to the book of the law. They were attentive for three hours at least. They were intentionally listening well. Not only were they listening well, they were responding well too. In verse 6 of the same chapter, it is recorded that they began to respond to the word. They began to say, Amen, Amen, which means, so be it, so be it. And their bowing of heads and the worshipping of the Lord with their faces to the ground showed their desire to respond and to submit to the word of God. They were responding to God's word. Amen, amen. They were worshipping and they were bowing their heads before God. In fact, three verses later, in verse 9, they began to weep. They began to weep at the conviction of God's word upon their hearts. 
They had heard the words of the law. And because they have heard how they have not been living according to God's law, begin, they have not been living according to God's word, they began to weep. We read that all the people wept. But Nehemiah and Ezra, and Ezra told them not to moan and weep for now. For we will see later that Nehemiah and Ezra knew that a greater work needs to be done. It is well and good that the people were responding to God's word, that they were quickened in their hearts, they were touched, but a greater work still needs to be done. And that would come later. For now, we read in verse 8 that Ezra and the priests had read from the law of God. They read it clearly and they gave the sense so that people understood the meaning. Something that we pastors and preachers try to do as well. We try to read God's word, but not only read God's word, try to give it a sense of what it's trying to say and so that the people could understand it. So pray for us that we will always be able to do so be able to preach God's word well so that the people get a sense of what God is saying to all of us. But can I also say that here in chapter 8, the people played their part as well in listening well. Here in chapter 8, it is clear that the people had listened well to God's word. Not only had Ezra and Nehemiah preached well, but the people also intentionally listened well. They had intentionally gathered to listen to the Word of God. They had listened to it attentively. And they had begun to open their hearts and respond to God's Word. Let me say that again. They had intentionally gathered to listen to the Word of God. They had listened to it attentively. And they had begun to open their hearts and respond to God's Word. And I think that's what all of us need to do to intentionally try to listen well. It is about us preparing ourselves to come, ready to listen to God's Word. It is about us paying attention attentively to what is being preached. It is about us opening our hearts to God's Word and being ready to respond to it. Actually, we all know this. Two students in class listening to the same math teacher teaching math but the one who attends, who listens attentively, ready to learn, is the one who will learn much more, isn't it? A number of years ago, when I was still in seminary, and I began to learn a bit about uh, the art of crafting sermons. And so there was a module of, on uh, homiletics on how do we craft sermons that I was attending. And I was in church on Sunday, sitting with my parents, in the Sunday service. When the pastor began to preach, I began to analyse his sermon, thinking about whether he was using this technique or that technique that I was learning in my class. And I could tell that he was intentionally using some of the techniques. And some parts I was mm, quite impressed in using it intentionally. Uh, some parts I was like, eh, less so. I thought I had analysed the sermon quite well and I gave the sermon hmm, 7 upon 10. Uh, that was it. It was a decent sermon. When the pastor said amen at the end of the sermon, I looked at my mom who was sitting next to me and she was bawling her eyes out. She was crying so hard. She was almost hyperventilating as she was crying. I mean, I knew my mom, you know, she, she, I knew she, she cried easily. Uh, she even cried at my wedding. But this was next level of crying, you know, there in the service. And when she finally stopped, she told me how what the pastor preached that day was like God speaking straight into her heart, speaking right into a situation and talking to her. Then, then I was convicted in my heart. I knew I had lost the plot that day. You know, I had been convicted that it was a decent sermon. But my mom had been convicted by God's word itself. She had been convicted by God himself for her life. The same words fell on both our ears. But my mom had gotten so much more out of that sermon that day. So much more than me. My mom listened well, but I had not. Listening well is about being ready. Almost eager 
to hear what God would say to us from His Word, being attentive to what God might be saying to us and being ready to respond to God's Word. The question is, have you been listening well? Have you been listening well? The people there gathered at the water gate listened well. But you know, they didn't just listen well. They went on to live out the word well too. And here's what we read from the later part of chapter 8, from verses 14 to 17. Let me read it for us. In verses 14 to 17, it says here, And they, the people who are gathered there that day, they found it written in the law that the Lord had commanded by Moses that people of Israel should dwell in booths or temporary shelters or tents during the feast of the seventh month. And they should proclaim it and publish it in all their towns and in Jerusalem. Go out to the hills, bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy, leaf, leafy trees, trees, other leafy trees to make booths as, as it is written. And so the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on his roof and in their courts, in the courts of the house of God, in the square of the water gate and the square of, at the gate of Ephraim. And all the assembly of those who had returned from captivity made booths and lived in the booths. For from the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, to that day, the people of Israel had not done so. They had not lived in booths all these years. They had not obeyed God's law all these years. And then there was a great rejoicing, a very great rejoicing. So you see, the people had earlier begun to respond to, with their hearts and weep because they had realized they had not been following the word of God. All these years, since, the, since Joshua's time, they had not been following the word of God. And Nehemiah had told them not to weep because Nehemiah and Ezra knew that there was a greater work that still needs to be done. And this is the greater work. That not only must the people listen well to the Word of God, they must intentionally live it well too. They not only must listen well to the Word of God, they must live it well too. They had realized that they had not been following the law that God had commanded by Moses to the people, that they must dwell in the booths, in temporary shelters during the Feast of the Seventh Month. And while it may just be a simple thing, right? Just a, almost a ritualistic thing to dwell in the booths, to just stay in the tents. But it signified so much more for them. So much more. It signified that the people were now ready to live once again by God's law. That they would intentionally now once again live according to God's word that they will live it out well. It signified an orientation shift, a mindset shift, a shift in how they would live their lives. They would now live their lives according to the Word of God. The Word of God will now be their guide. It will be the lamp upon their feet in how they make decisions. The Word of God will determine how they live their lives. And we see how intentional they were in wanting to know how they should live their lives according to God's Word. Because we would read in verse 18, the last verse of chapter 8, that day by day, from the first day to the last day, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They kept the feast for seven days, and on the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly according to the rule. They continued to listen to God's word for the next seven days. They desired to know God's word and how they should live their lives because they wanted to not just listen well to the word, but they wanted to live it out well too. In the next chapter, we will read of how the people continue to make changes in their lives according to God's word. But for now, it is suffice to say that they listen well. But not only did they listen well, they are living out well in their lives. They are living out the Word of God well in their lives. They listened well and they lived it well. And by doing so, the community is being transformed. 
they are being reformed more and more once again into the likeness of God's people. A people who would live by the standards of God. A people who would be set apart for God and make a difference in their world by the way they live their lives. Living their lives according to God's word. Church, I want us to imagine what it will look like for us as a church if we really intentionally and purposefully listen well and live well. If we listen well by preparing ourselves, coming to church services early, to prepare our hearts to be open to what God is saying to us, if we listen well by being attentive to what God is saying through the words that are being preached, not only our minds, but for our hearts as well, if we listen well by responding to God, opening our hearts to the conviction of the Holy Spirit upon us, can you imagine what would happen? Imagine what it would look like for us as a church if we intentionally lift out the Word of God well in our lives, letting the Word transform us in who we are, in how we relate to one another, in how we relate to our spouses, to our children, to our parents, in how we treat our bosses, our colleagues, our subordinates. Listen to me, church. I believe if we listen well and live well according to the Word of God, we will be reformed. We will be transformed. We will be set apart. We will be as fragrance unto the Lord. We will be salt and light. We will become different and we will make a difference in the lives of one another, in the lives of others in this world and we will encounter God through one another and by that we will love God more and love one another more. Isn't that something that we all crave for? To be able to see God work so mightily in our lives that we feel transformed from within, reformed from within, to be more and more like Christ. And for that to happen, we need to listen well and live the Word of God out well. We will be transformed. We will be reformed if we listen well and live well according to the Word of God. Let us pray together. Father, this day as we gather in your house, as one people listening to your word, we thank you, O Lord, for what you have spoken to us through Nehemiah chapter 8. Lord, we give of ourselves to you as one people. Lord, our desire is to listen well and to live out well the word of God. Help us, O Lord, by your grace. We know we cannot do this on our own because we all, like sheep, have gone astray. We are like people who cannot sometimes listen properly and lift out your word properly. But we know that your Holy Spirit can empower us. And we want your Holy Spirit to empower us. So come, Holy Spirit. Come, touch our lives. Come, fill us with your empowerment so that, Lord, we always, we always listen well and live out well the word of God in all of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that we can look to you for your grace is sufficient for us. Indeed, in Jesus' name and all God's people say, Amen. Amen indeed.